Today, I want to share with you a crazy story coming out of Texas, and this time it's involving a jailer, as it's referred to in this story, getting arrested for bringing the pack in. Folks, this wasn't just any old jailer, neither, as you're going to learn as we share this story. Uh, absolutely insane. What this jailer would be overheard saying was that this was the last time. And unfortunately, he couldn't have been any more correct about the situation because he would get caught for bringing the pack in to a prisoner. So yeah, it absolutely was his last time. Last time, El Paso jailer arrested for smuggling papers laced with cannabis into Annex. In the state of Virginia, an annex portion of a jail or prison is referred to like an, like an auxiliary part of it, uh, an additional building or section or area. Uh, not sure if that's what it means here in Texas, but maybe it does. Folks, this story's coming to us out of El Paso, Texas at that. A longtime El Paso County Sheriff's Office jailer, man, that's a run-on sentence right there, who said it would be his last time smuggling drugs to an inmate was allegedly paid by a gangster disciple street gang member to deliver papers laced with synthetic cannabis into the El Paso County Jail Annex. Court documents state, I shit you not, that entire paragraph was one sentence. Not only was it a really high-ranking jailer, as we're going to be learning about in this story, uh, this jailer was also paid by a street gang, the Gangster Disciples, a member of that gang, to bring in uh, this K2-like substance, paper laced with this spray, into the jail. Before we go any further with this, you know, one thought that comes to mind is, was this guy being extorted, threatened? Hey, look, if you don't do this, you know, it ain't gonna be, it ain't gonna be good for you. It ain't gonna be safe. I'm not exactly sure if that was the rationale behind why this jailer was bringing these narcotics into the jail or if it was just the money he was being paid handsomely to do so and even with the high-ranking jail status that this guy had you know money's money and you're probably only making well not very much of that working in a jail just my opinion, I don't necessarily know. Lance Brown, pictured right here, 57 years old, of El Paso, was arrested on July 30th on suspicion of engaging in organized criminal activity, El Paso County Sheriff's Office officials said. Uh, look at this mugshot right here of this guy. Certainly has the you big dummy face going on in this. Probably thinking about himself, his career is over. This guy actually worked in the jail for a very long time. And uh, yeah, he's got to be feeling absolutely ridiculous in this mugshot. And maybe even a little bit of fear as well because, yo, you about to be right up in there with the dudes that you was jailing. That's got to be a pretty crazy thing to be thinking about. The illegal acts of this high-ranking sheriff's office employee are reprehensible and place the health of inmates in jeopardy. Criminal acts will not be tolerated and those responsible will be held accountable. Brown worked at the sheriff's office for 35 years, man. This dude had a full-blown correctional officer career. Pissed down the toilet, possibly because of the lucrativeness. That's a lot of syllables right there. Uh, possibly because of how lucrative the money was that he was being paid to, you know, smuggle this contraband into the jail. Or again, another plausible scenario here, we're talking about the Gangster Disciples, a street gang. Hey, they could have put the fear of God in this dude. Yo, if you don't do this for, do you know who we are? Yo, we the, we, we the Gangster Disciples. I probably shouldn't make jokes about that, which I, I, I'm really not trying to, but you know, they could have threatened this dude. If you don't do this, we're coming after you. Not only did this guy work at the jail for 35 years, he was not just your regular old run-of-the-mill jailer. This dude was a freaking lieutenant. This dude had bars on his arm. This dude had rank up in the jail. 35 years. Dude was a... I God, I just want to drop that F-bomb right there. Dude was a... Fraggle Rock. He was a lieutenant, y'all. 
at the jail annex in Far East El Paso. He resigned from his position after his arrest. And, and again, looking at this mugshot right here. I know this is gonna come across the wrong, boy, Joe, your chest is getting big, boy. Your chest is getting mighty. I ain't been working out again, but for one week. But if y'all ever saw the way that I looked three years ago when I got back for reals, I was back better than I ever was in prison. Here's pictures of old Joe right, right here. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to get back to exactly this. I know this is going to come across the wrong way to some, but yo, I, I look at this mugshot right here, man, and I, I, and I feel just a tinge of uh, pity for this dude. Again, 35 years. We don't know whether he was being threatened to do this or if it was just the money talking to him, having him walk the walk because the money talked the talk. Maybe it's just because of that goofball face he's got going on right here, like just knowing it's over. 35 years, again, pissed down the drain. I, I wish we could find this guy and do an interview. Hey, Lance Brown, if you get a chance to see this video, send me an email, link down in the description of this video to find me. Send me an email. I would love to do an interview with you and hear your side of the story. He'll probably never call. Uh, this guy doesn't have an attorney at the time of this story coming out, which just came out yesterday, I believe. Jailer paid to smuggle synthetic cannabis to inmate. Uh, this portion of the story saying right here. So maybe he wasn't being threatened. Maybe it was just, again, them dollar signs talking to this guy. Deputies received information in July that an inmate, 43-year-old Charles Anthony Ant Johnson, was receiving illegal drugs from outside of the jail annex, officials said. Somebody told. Was it another prisoner who was hating on this dude, didn't like this guy, scared of this dude? You know, in jail and prison. Sometimes if you got a beef with a dude and you know you ain't really trying to show that you're scared, but you know damn full good and well that you are and you ain't going to fight this dude. One form of retaliation, and believe it or not, it happens more times than you can imagine. One form of retaliation is just straight, straight flying a kite on dude, dropping dime passing a note to the guards and getting dude up out of there. I remember a time specifically uh, where a knife was placed under the mattress, uh, a prison shank was placed under the mattress of another prisoner, a note was dropped, and stick man was ran down on by the guards. They found the knife, unbeknownst to the dude at all. Yo, what, the, what you mean? This ain't mine. This wasn't here five minutes ago. Set him up, got him up out of there. Maybe it was a case like that where this Charles Anthony Ant Johnson was having problems with another prisoner or, you know, they were just hating on him. Probably was another prisoner that, that told on him. But then again, the story will provide a little bit more information to make it plausible that maybe it wasn't another prisoner that dropped dime. An investigation allegedly revealed Johnson's sister, 28-year-old Deshaun Green, was applying the synthetic cannabis into sheets of paper and she would give the drug-laced paper to Johnson's girlfriend, a complaint affidavit states. Damn. Uh, they said the investigation unveiled all of that. Who actually told in this particular case to have all of that information? Talking about dude's sister was making this and then giving it to his girlfriend and then the girlfriend, 40-year-old Alante Granberry, would deliver the drug lace papers in a folder to Brown, again, the lieutenant, 35 years on the force, the correctional force, that is, who would then give them to Johnson, the affidavit states. Johnson would allegedly smoke the drug lace papers or sell them to other inmates. They make no mention of how much money we're talking about here. They make no mention of how long this was going on for. But what they do make mention of is a lot more interesting stuff. Hey, look, if you're enjoying this video thus far, please leave a like and a comment. Subscribe to After Prison Show if you're not already subscribed here. Make sure you got bell notifications turned on, please. I don't like to beg, but I'm gonna beg, man, turn them notifications on, please. You don't wanna miss a minute of what we've got going on over here. I'm working diligently to bring y'all the very best in terms of prison-related content and news stories ever. So show some love if you wouldn't mind. Leave a like, a comment, subscribe, turn on bell notif- My God, that's a laundry list of, of tasks I'm asking y'all for right there. He would have his sister or girlfriend pay Brown through Cash App. My God, we got a paper trail. Why not just go get the money 
and deliver the money in an envelope. See, we've gotten so lazy nowadays. There's too much that can lead to a paper trip. Cash app, recorded phone calls, which this story is going to talk about. You know, if you would have just been giving this dude cash, that would have been a hell of a lot harder to track than a freaking cash app account. <laughs> Where? <laughs> oh, shit. Here's the real cherry on the cake, too. I forgot cherry. Uh, here's the real cherry on top, too, to consider. Think of these stories that we've been talking about where people are getting paid through cash app. Do you know that come the beginning of the year, man, they about to receive a 1099 form from the IRS. They're going to have to pay taxes on them illegitimate gains that they've been paid. What kind of business were you running? You're, you're a 1099 employee? Oh, you're an independent contractor. What, what kind of smuggling drugs? In K2, Salvia LLC. The affidavit does not state how much Brown was paid. Johnson is a confirmed member of the Gangster Disciple Street Gang, the affidavit states. Uh, the affidavit does not state what crime Johnson is serving time for at the jail annex. However, jail records show he has an extensive criminal record, including arrest for several assaults and drug charges. Jailhouse phone calls lead to arrest of jailer. Man, they didn't write an article on this. They wrote an entire book with chapters on this story right here. An El Paso County Sheriff's Office detective, along with detectives from the Office of Internal Affairs, began monitoring Johnson's jailhouse phone calls. Johnson was allegedly heard in several phone conversations directing Ganberry, his girlfriend, on when to deliver the drugs to Brown. Go ahead and make that drop, girl. Yeah, he's getting ready to go on break right now. Ain't nobody listening to these calls. They just be talking about that. Talking about you've got a recorded call. Ain't nobody listening to this. What you mean you hear some clicking on the other end? The detectives were monitoring the jail annex parking lot about 9.53 p.m. July 19 when they were notified Johnson told Gamberry about the delivery. Gamberry arrived at the parking lot and went into the annex's lobby with a folder in her hand. She remained in the lobby for some time and exited with the folder, uh, the affidavit states. So she went in with the folder, she came out with the folder, but I'm guessing the folder was empty when she came out. Trying to be slick, right? Just in case anybody's watching, you know, if you're gonna walk in with the folder, and who's to say it wasn't, you know, court paperwork being delivered at 10 o'clock at night. The internal affairs detective contacted Brown, who had several pieces of paper and was in the process of making copies, the affidavit states. The detectives took the papers as evidence and Brown was dismissed from his tour of duty. Damn, this shit sounds like call of duty right now. I don't know why. Man, they making it sound like dude was over in Iraq or some shit. Hey, look, man, uh, you've been relieved of your tour of duty. So when they ran down on this lieutenant, he must have been in like the break room or, or somewhere. He was making copies of pages, trying to make it look a little more legit for whatever reason. I, I'm guessing that's, you know, what was going on when they ran down on dude. They took the paperwork from him, probably with the synthetic sprayed papers as well. And then they relieved him of his tour of duty. An El Paso County Sheriff's Office canine officer and his drug-sniffing dog, Walter. <laughs> That's a little ironic, right? I wonder if they named the dog Walter after Walter White. Heisenberg. Uh, Walter just sounds like a really weird name for... Look, do I need to call Walter over here? Who the hell is Walter? A canine. Uh, Walter arrived to assist in the investigation. The drug-sniffing dog alerted the detectives to the papers that Brown had been carrying. Some bitch, you dead to rights. It reminds me of when I went to trial. For those of you who don't know, old Joe, me, myself, I served seven years, was sentenced to seven and a half years, served six years, 10 months. For drug charges, possession of a firearm, was pulled over with a quarter ounce of cocaine and a gun that belonged to the girl that was in the car with me, registered to her and everything, but Joe took the rap for it. Would have been a misdemeanor for her. A simple possession of a possession of a concealed firearm would have been the charge for her. That would have been a misdemeanor because she was registered. She was the registered owner of the gun. You know, for Joe, it was Project Exile. Automatic two to five. Then add in the drugs as well. That's an automatic five piece. Gun by itself was an automatic two. The gun with the drugs, automatic five. 
So I, I got an automatic seven. Couldn't get anything less. They gave me seven and a half. But I, I share that with you because when I went to trial, that's right, Joe tried to fight them folks up in the courtroom. I, I tried to hold court in the street in the courtroom. But I'll never forget when I went to trial because they didn't come at me with no plea deal or nothing worth me taking. I said, see me in court, which they did. And they put the canine officer on the stand. That was the only person they put on the stand. They didn't need nobody else. My statement against myself, plus um, plus Sparky, the canine, whatever his damn name was, got me convicted. The detectives met with other jail annex employees. One of the employees said they were called Ganberry, again, the girlfriend of the gangster disciple prisoner who was in the jail receiving the pack from this lieutenant. One of the employees said they had recalled Ganberry had delivered folders that contained sheets of paper to the front desk on June 4th and asked for Lieutenant Brown. The employee claimed they overheard Brown during a July 19th incident tell Ganberry it was the last time he would be doing that. So that's interesting right there. We've got this guy on June the 4th. We've got this guy on July the 19th. And they said that he was arrested, the, the lieutenant was arrested on July the 30th. I'm not sure if that was during, you know, maybe he was arrested right then and there. So we're talking about at least three different incidents. But they said on July the 19th, Brown was overheard telling the girlfriend, yo, this is the last time I'm doing this. Which makes me question, was this guy being extorted and forced to do this? you mean this is the last time you're going to be doing it? This is not the last time because, again, he was arrested on July the 30th, which could have been, in fact, another time that he was doing this. A second jail annex employee told detectives Gamberry came to the annex in April and May asking for Brown. So it's certainly sounding like this was taking place quite a bit. Gamberry allegedly handed a folder that contained glossy type sheets which the officer found to be unusual since they weren't for court purposes, the affidavit states. The jail annex employee told detectives they knew Ganberry from their time as co-workers at a local restaurant. Jailhouse security cameras on May 12th showed Brown delivering a folder to Jail Pod 300. A few moments later, Brown was seen walking out of Pod 300 without the folder. He walked in with it, walked out without it. And then Johnson was later seen with a similar folder. The sheets of paper taken from Brown July 19th were tested for drugs. Okay, so the incident in question took place on July 19th, and then it sounds like on July 30th he was actually arrested. They were tested for drugs. The results were positive for ADB Butanaka. Am I pronouncing that correctly? ADB Butanaka, which is a form of synthetic cannabis Again, the affidavit states. Jailer resigns after drug smuggling arrest. Brown was arrested on suspicion of engaging in organized criminal activity. He was booked into the El Paso County Jail again, sounding like the same place that he worked at for 35 years. He got a $10,000 bond, posted his bond, and was released the same day. He resigned from his position after the arrest. Jail records do not show if Johnston is being charged with a crime for allegedly using and selling the drugs while in jail. However, he pleaded guilty in 2019 to possession of prohibited substances in a correctional facility and was sentenced to nine years in jail on the charge. Uh, and again, folks, like we mentioned in a previous video, Man, Texas don't play. Dude got a charge for possession of a prohibited substance in a correctional facility back in 2019 and got nine years in jail for it. They said they don't know what dude's locked up for right now, but it certainly sounds like that's part of it. Ganberry, the girlfriend, was arrested on Monday, July 29th on suspicion of engaging in organized criminal activity. Jail records show she was released from jail the next day after posting a $10,000 personal reconnaissance bond. I ain't never heard of a, a bond like that. You've got a PR bond. A PR bond is a personal reconnaissance bond, which means you just sign yourself up out of jail. I've never heard of one having a monetary amount attached to it, but I guess... That kind of makes sense, right? We're going to let you sign yourself up out of jail for free. But if you don't show up to court, $10,000, what you about to be owing is what that sounds like. Uh, they don't say if the sister was arrested. 
which is crazy because she's allegedly the one that was making the drugs. However, she was arrested March 20th on suspicion of possession of a controlled substance. Uh, but that doesn't seem like, or they don't mention if that is in relation to everything that was taking place in the jail. That was back in March 20th. Wait a minute. What if it was the sister that told on everybody? Certainly makes you wonder. No other information is listed in jail or court records in connection with that arrest. Oh, yeah, that definitely makes you wonder. Absolutely insane story coming to us out of Texas, folks. You let me know what you think about all of this. Was it another prisoner that was jealous uh, who dropped dime on this situation? But how would they have so much information as to who was doing what? The sister was making it. The girlfriend was meeting with the guard. The guard was the one who was bringing it in. To me personally, sounds like maybe the sister might have copped herself a, a cooperation bond and also deal as well. Hey, look, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did so, please leave a like and a comment on this, letting me know exactly what you thought about this. And as always, until next time, enjoy life, the free world, never take a moment for granted, and make the most of every day. Peace!